The pandemic has led to many changes in our workflow. Mobile workforces, customized working times have become the new normal. But flexible and innovative work concepts require new tools and processes from companies. So today I'll be talking to Andreas Obereder, CEO and founder of Atos Software, about his vision to revolutionize the interaction of economy and humanity through digitized workforce management. Welcome, Andreas Obereder. Let's talk about new work, a term that we use quite inflationary lately. What does it really mean for you? I think it's more than uh, working remote or having a nice office and comfy sofas. For me, new work stands for a better balance between the interests of the employers and the employees. It puts the employee in, a, in the center and asks, what can we as an employer do better in our way of working to attract and retain the best possible talent? Remote work or nice offices with a fruit basket alone want to the trick because it touches only the desk workers. Successful companies make sure to look at the entire workforce. Also to the frontline workers who perform their job not in the office, but on a production line, a cash desk, a hospital bed or similar. So in the end, fancy co-working spaces won't help them, but the good workforce management tool can. So digitized workforce management is the tool as you say, to shape the future of work. How can a digitized workforce management help to make enterprises or work organizations really fit for the future? Let me give you a simple example. Think of a large retail store that employs dozens, if not hundreds of people per store. We all know from our own experience that uh, customer traffic in a store varies a lot. Yeah? Crowded on a weekend or in the evening hours, empty on a week, uh, weekday morning. So a good workforce management solution makes sure that your employees work when they are most needed. Second, it also makes sure that only people who are trained for a cash test are scheduled to work there. Third, it makes sure that easy and hard shifts are equally distributed among the workers to create fairness. And fourth, a good tool integrates the employees in that process. It asks them through an app yeah, about their work preferences and gives the employees the possibility to swap shifts among each other to better integrate their work life and their private life. So let's talk about the ATOS vision, so to say. Your vision is to revolutionize the interplay between economy and humanity. Does that mean that ultimately you wish to make economy more human? Yes, our vision says we are shaping the revolution in working environments to benefit companies, their workers and society. We are opening the door to a working life that is more creative, more intelligent and more human and revolutionizing the interplay of cost effectiveness and humanity. So I understand that cohesion, team spirit, a shared creativity, let's say overall a positive employee's experience is very important for companies to be successful. So can you have both, like a positive employee's experience and at the same time a customer-centric work ethic? Oh, I don't think that you should balance between them. Actually, they come hand in hand. A positive employee experience correlates directly with employee efficiency, creativity and productivity. This in turn has the same effect on customers. Happy employees create happy customers. It is as simple as that. 
So I think the ability to change, to undergo transformational processes is uh, a precondition that is very important for the success of, of a company, of an enterprise. How do you convince um, work organizations that are maybe a bit skeptical or fearful about change? The need for change and the speed of change will continue to, to increase. Organizations that are not, are not open for change will be out of business soon. Let's get back to the retail store uh, example. Think of a retail store that lives up to the needed flexibility. First, always enough people on the floor, but never too many. Second, people with the right skills. Third, people at the right cost. Fourth, people that are happy with their work-life balance because it respects their private life. And now let's think about an old school retail store with first fixed working hours, second no possibility for employees to influence their schedule, third long checkout queues in busy times because of understuffing and fourth bored employees in quiet times because of overstuffing. Who do you think will survive and gain market share? Okay, yeah, it's quite obvious, probably the first one. Let's talk about the employee's attractiveness, which is key to success, especially in the war of talents that we have nowadays. How late in the game are we in Germany or let's say Europe compared to the rest of the world? The most important thing is that companies recognize what to expect. The skills shortage will not go away. Plus, the younger workforce generation Y and Z demand different things from companies than before. They expect first a digital experience in the companies and second have high demands on work-life balance. If you want to be successful in attracting the high potentials you have to offer flexibility. Employees today want to decide at least to be involved in those decision-making processes when they work and where they work. And yes, what we see here is, back to our uh, question at the beginning, that other continents and countries are already more advanced than Europe and Germany. So right now we are facing multiple crises with the climate change being probably the most urgent crisis. How does your technology provide or contribute to sustainability and environmental protection? Our solution helps to make processes more efficient and effective. We are cutting out a lot of slack from the processes of our customers and most of the time this leads to a better use of resources. First, this can go from replacing paper-based processes with a digital version, over second, reducing the energy consumption by moving solutions into the cloud, up to enabling carpooling by adjusting the schedule to it. So speaking of the current changes, the current crises that are going on right now in the world around us. What would be your outlook for the next, let's say, two to five years? So first of all, I really hope that we all will live in a more peaceful world. Absolutely. A second, on the more business related topics, we will see continuation and acceleration of trends visible already today. First, digitization of HR processes. Second, move to the cloud. Close to every new workforce management solution will be cloud-based rather in two than in five years. Third, the shortage of skilled workers will continue to increase and make life even more challenging for many companies. Fourth, need for flexibility will further increase and with it the complexity of managing the workforce. Fifth, likewise, the pressure to manage workforce efficiently and fairly. So while this might be sound dooming, I'm also optimistic 
that companies will find intelligent and innovative solutions for managing their workforce. Thank you so much, Andreas Obereder. Thank you too. Also for this positive outlook into the future. And I think it corresponds nicely with uh, the vision of Artos uh, to revolutionize or to improve the so. interplay between economy and human humanity. Thank you so much. Thank you too.